Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rising. Sagar, what are we doing today? We have an amazing show for everybody today. We have Michael Tracy to talk a little bit about impeachment. Bernie Sanders has a new plan about money and politics. We're going to talk and break it down, compare it to Elizabeth Warren's. We've got Charles Lehman of the Free Beacon to talk about declining life expectancy in Missouri and across the United States, unfortunately. And then a little bit about the, the vape ban and why the Obama administration did not act when there was some evidence and also, on it. Yes. We hit 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> That's right. Thank That's you, right. guys. We're Thank so you all grateful. So much. All that and more coming up today on Rising. What are you looking at, Sagar? Well, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has been caught making things up again about her past, this time by the enterprising Tommy Christopher over at Mediate. Warren frequently makes reference on the campaign trail and in public to an alleged incident where she was dismissed as a teacher for being visibly pregnant. Let's take a listen. So my first teaching position was as a special needs teacher. There we go. I loved that job, but by the end of the first school year, I was quite visibly pregnant, and the principal didn't invite me back for the next school year. The problem, as with many things about Elizabeth Warren, is that that is a version of events meant to tug at the heartstrings is not what she was saying back in 2007. During an interview with then Four Conversations with History, Warren says she decided to abandon her calling as a teacher because she lacked the proper credentials to qualify for a permanent position. Listen in her own words. I worked, it was in a public school system, but I worked with the, the children with disabilities. And um, I did that for a year. And then that summer, uh, I, I actually didn't have the education courses, so I was on an emergency certificate, it was mm -hmm. called. And I went back to graduate school and took a couple of courses in education and said, I don't think this is going to work out for me. Mm -hmm. There it is, plain as day. Some of Warren's defenders said it wasn't technically a lie because pregnancy may still have been one of the reasons she was dismissed. <laughs> it's hard to find credulity in that idea, however, given that she said very clearly she left of her own accord and wasn't pressured out. Look, I know this seems tedious. Parsing the words of somebody from 10, 20, 30 years ago seems like trivial sniping when we're in the middle of an election about a battle for ideas. But the messenger of those ideas is actually really important. Elizabeth Warren's mistruth here is important because it's just the latest example we have of her misleading people about her past in order to construct a mythos of somebody who's always been an underdog fighting to overcome the system. Warren misrepresented her heritage for years because it made her stand out and appear special. Harvard University touted her diversity as evidence of its import while she worked there. She concocted wild stories about her past in which her father and mother eloped because of her Native American heritage, literally none of which appears to be true if you examine the historical evidence at the time, as I did last week on this show. For years and years, she clung to a story which made her appear special and different, and in this case, discriminated against for her gender in order to craft a faux appeal to the people who actually experience those things in their daily lives. The gross misrepresentation is the worst form of pandering. The true version of her rise from Oklahoma single mother to Harvard law professor and United States senator is plenty impressive on its own. Just run with that. One of the things that the media misunderstands most about this race is that policy positions matter quite a bit less than the messenger behind them. Nearly the entire Democratic field is out with some version or the other of a single-payer health care plan. Nearly the entire Republican field was out with some immigration restrictionist plan back in 2016. Why did voters choose Donald Trump in that election? Because they actually believed he would do it. How many times have you seen people pay lip service to the ideas that you believe in and then turn away the moment that they have some kind of power in Washington? It is a tale as old as time. And if Elizabeth Warren wants to say that she's going to bring fundamental change as president of the United States, then the people who vote for her need to be reasonably certain that she'll actually do it when she's in office. How can that be so when the body of evidence that we have, the constant misrepresent of her past during her rise to the top, it's a gift to anybody on the right it asks a fundamental question about our candidacy. Is she actually telling the truth when she says that she'll actually fight for you? 
And Crystal, I mean, I know I take a lot of heat for highlighting a lot of these things, but it's like I was saying, the truth behind this, the heritage scandal, the constant mistruths, the truth behind Hillary Clinton's emails was she was, this woman is dishonest and she gets away with things that nobody else would ever get, get away with here. Yeah. And the truth behind this is that she misrepresented herself for years and years and years and years in order to advance herself in her career and craft an appeal. I mean, can you imagine if, when you're, when you're, uh, whenever you're making a mistruth like this and connecting with women who've actually yeah. been discriminated against yeah. because of pregnancy or people who've actually been discriminated yeah. against because of the color of their skin, we actually know something a little bit about this. Right. And so to see somebody use that to try and craft an appeal with you and then to see that it's not true, that's what's wrong. It's gross. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the larger question it begs, I think, is really important, which is, is she representing, is she being honest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. Is she being honest about who she is? Is she being honest about what she would do in office and how hard she would fight for you? That's, that's important. But you're right to stick on the specific details here, which is there are many, many, many women, especially working class women, exactly. who are fired because of their pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And for you to make that up about your life when it's not true, to try to play into some like identity politics card and empathize with women who really have gone through that, it's, it's yeah, gross exactly. and you don't have to do it. I mean, I think the bottom line here is she, obviously if you look at who her coalition is, she appeals to a more white, mm -hmm. a more upper class demographic. And she tries to craft this folksy, I'm one of you appeal using, you know, what she has to work with and then stretching the truth. And even with those exaggerations, it still doesn't land with the audience that she wants. But it's enough to convince those upper middle class white people that maybe she could right, appeal exactly. to, yeah. you know, working class like, oh, people. She's just like she's them. Folksy, she struggled. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we see, you know, I mean, yeah. the, the numbers are the numbers. That is not who our coalition yeah, is. Exactly. Next on Rising. Journalist Michael Tracy he explains why Ukraine Gate is not the scandal Democrats should hitch their impeachment wagon to. And the concerns he says it raises about the intelligence community, all important stuff when Rising returns.